back on the Young Turks. You know, you often hear the excuse from the government, wow, we'd love to do the financial fraud cases, but God, we just don't have the resources. And besides, which we've been awfully tough on the banks. <laughs> Laugh along with me. But you know what? Steve Croft from 60 Minutes actually did a very good story uh, where he talked to Larry Brewer, who's the head of the criminal division at the Department of Justice. And he asked him about the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. So if you don't know that, it's, it's okay. It's what it is, is an act that says CEOs have to sign on to say, hey, you know what, we're not committing any fraud in this company. And if it turns out that that's not true, they can get up to five years in prison. Now, with this financial collapse, co companies like Countrywide, where there was wide-scale fraud, this is a perfect place to use the Sarbanes-Oxley Act to hold those top executives accountable. And Croft is going to ask him, why didn't you do it? Let's watch. Do you lack confidence in bringing cases under Sarbanes-Oxley? Steve, no, no one is really has accused this Department of Justice or this division or me of lacking confidence. If you look at the prosecutors all over the country, they are bringing record cases with respect to all kinds of criminal laws. Sarbanes-Oxley is a tool, but it's only one tool. <laughs> no one's accusing you? I'm accusing you? And record cases? Well, that just simply isn't true. In fact, we have the numbers to show you. A Syracuse University study uh, actually looked into this, and they found out that a prosecution of uh, federal financial cases went from a high of about 3,500 cases in 1999 down to 1,251 cases in 2011. And as you see there, 1,365 cases in the last full year of 2010, right? So look at that number go way down, not up. Fraud cases down 57%. So what happened to the fearsome Obama Department of Justice that no one accused uh, of not following through on these cases? I accuse you because I have the numbers. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I, you got to understand, Jake, there's nothing they can do. They just don't have the resources. Really? Interesting, because David Sirota points out uh, a, an article in the Washington Post today about when the government goes after food stamps. But it turns out when they're going after food stamp fraud, they've got plenty of resources. In fact, at the state level in 2010, they conducted 847,000 fraud investigations. Oh, well, you say, okay, that's the state level. How about the federal level? Nearly 5,000 undercover investigations, which take longer. 5,000 versus only 1,200 against uh, the financial executives. Gee, I wonder where their priorities are. I can't quite tell, okay? And by the way, you know how much there is in food stamp fraud in the country? $753 million. Now, that sounds like a lot, and I want you to pursue that. I don't want there to be fraud at that level. But the banks did, <laughs> did not millions. They did billions. Not billions, sometimes trillions of dollars from us. That's much more important, yet somehow you can't find the resources for it. Look, Matt Taibbi also had a good piece about this. He talked about a mother of two in Mississippi. Uh, she goes, and her name is Anita uh, McLemore. And she apparently uh, asked for food stamps when she had, has a criminal record. She had been busted on drugs before. How dare you? I didn't even know that was illegal. Apparently, you can't feed your kids if you have a criminal record from before. So they said, this was fraud. We got you. How much fraud did she do? She did $4,367 of fraud. Not billions, not truly. Just $4,367. That's it, okay? You know how much she got? She got three years in prison. Here's what Judge Wingate said while... Uh, sending her away. He said, uh, defendant's criminal record is simply abominable. She has been the beneficiary of government generosity in state court. Well, how about the guys who've been the beneficiary of trillions of dollars at the federal level? No, 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 we don't have resources for them. We've got to go after mothers of two who are trying to feed their kids. All right, but, uh, you know, there are other things that we spend money on. How much money did we spend on the war on drugs? $15 billion that the federal government spent that's $500 a second. We'll see when you have the resources, apparently you know where to spend them, huh? $25 billion at the state and local level as well. So $40 billion for the war on drugs, uh, but uh, financial fraud. Golly gee, Willikers, we just ran out of time and money. We were just about to get to it after the war on drugs and food stamp fraud. Uh, and then, you know how much they spent in New York City just evicting Occupy Wall Street? $13 million. But they, golly, when it comes to Goldman Sachs, What's weird is they just ran out of time. By the way, uh, Goldman Sachs, I believe, was the number one contributor 
to Barack Obama's campaign in 2008. A wild coincidence, I'm sure. Now, I want to explain something to you, okay? It's not like I think Obama is personally corrupt, like he gets in a smoke-filled room with Lloyd Blankfein. He's like, ha, 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 how do you want me to cheat the system for you? He's not Blago, right? What it is is he responds to financial incentives, probably oftentimes not even recognizing it. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. And Michael, you'll appreciate this. I bet on San Diego, uh, I'm sorry, on a San Diego-New England game a bunch of years back. Remember they played in the playoffs? Yeah, I do. And you know, I kind of like San Diego. Steelers are my team, but I used to like Dan Fouts. I lingering. But I thought, God, there's no way Marty Schottenheimer is going to beat the Patriots in the playoffs, right? Right, right? Inconceivable. So I put just 50 bucks on it. And I thought, it doesn't matter. If San Diego wins, I win, right? Because I like San Diego. If they lose, I win 50 bucks. I'm a winner either way. After the first quarter was over, I'm like, let's go Patriots! <laughs> okay, you know why? Because I put money on it. Isn't that how it works? Of course that's how it works. And that's why, you know, that's why campaign finance reform is at the root of all of this. Until that has changed, they're going to be, you know, they're the patriots. They're, you are going to be going for the person uh, or the team or the company or whoever it is that, that has the money on you. And that's just the way it works. It's, until that is fixed, until Citizens United is turned over, until there's a constitutional amendment, that's, that's the root of the problem. Nothing's going to change priorities. -wise. The only problem with what you just said is that I have nothing to disagree with. You're 100% right, 0% wrong. All right, when we come back, uh, Newt Gingrich picks someone even crazier than himself to be Secretary of State if he wins the presidency. We'll talk about that with Michael as well. Perry has an interesting anti-gay ad. Given some of the charges about Rick Perry, that's a curious choice. We'll talk about Rick Perry's curious choices and Huntsman with a legendary flip-flop. All that when we return.